Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll just confirm so, uh, after you start the streaming so that they yeah. can hear you as well as see the desktop without echo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then you can yeah. go ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, good morning, uh, all. Once again, uh, um, uh, requesting all to join back. Uh, Sanjeev uh, is our uh, uh, one of the senior uh, gardeners and uh, senior um, uh, OTGN and uh, conducted so many workshops and sessions. So we have requested uh, him uh, to have a uh, uh, gardening session today along with his garden tour. Uh, Sanjeev, over to you. Uh, we have time limitation. Uh, yeah. If possible, uh, try to finish by uh, 12, uh, 12, 12, 5, so that we can okay. start by 10 by uh, uh, Hari Ram. Okay, anyway, not a problem. Yeah. By 10 minutes, okay. Yes. So, shall we start? If we have uh, yes, people yes. already in. So welcome. Uh, today will this will be the first uh, OFIT uh, session which is happening online. So uh, things have uh, been really tight in this COVID situation, and uh, in the meanwhile, we have also learned how to still keep communicated and how to still keep the momentum going on. Right. So this has been a wonderful opportunity. Again, on behalf of BRICS, I thank you all of you uh, for attending this session, and I hope. Uh, many of them would uh, carry a lot of knowledge back to your homes. And for those who have uh, really come uh, to this training as for the first time, uh, I think um, uh, as there is a time limitation, it's not that uh, uh, we'll be able to cover up everything, but this basics uh, should definitely help you start off uh, the gardening stuff. And of course, we uh, as an organization and uh, we as a group, and uh, we are always there to go ahead and support you. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, share certain contacts uh, after this training, wherein you can still get in touch with us. We will ensure that you are successful in your venture in the, from the beginning. So we will, we will help you. So don't worry about it. So let's go ahead and begin. So we are just going to start off the PPT with uh, blessings from Lord Ganesha. As you know, right, why do you require uh, uh, terrace garden as of now and uh, like uh, many of the few many of you have been reading in the newspaper uh, 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 on the contamination the vegetables have been uh, grown with the contaminated water and so much of pesticides thrown onto the uh, onto the basically the vegetables right so uh, having been for uh, into the terrace gardening almost now eight years like there have been certain situation wherein we have gone to horticulture institutes for certain uh, trainings and um, uh, seeing and meeting so much of uh, persons, right? We have also come to know that basically there is some uh, um, lack of education which is also given out to the farmers. Basically, we, there are people, uh, there are farmers who are not aware of the quantities of pesticides to be used on the vegetables. So any manufacturer who is doing a pesticide or a, uh, an, uh, say fertilizer normally gives some ratings on the, on the boxes or the packaging, which none of them are followed. So it, it's very unfortunate to learn this uh, um, uh, situation. This is, all, this is also going to trigger a lot of other questions related to this, but uh, what I want to summarize uh, today is basically the vegetables which are uh, available in the commercial segment and the markets. Most of them, are, if not, I would say at least 95 to 96 percent are are uh, grown with the pesticides and the synthetic fertilizers which are available. And uh, basically, and why I'm saying this is there have been absolutely no quantification to it. That means if somebody says just use two ml they would have used like 20 ml of it. So it's basically going to be an alarming situation in few years to come. So, so if you see this small readings, which is uh, being presented, so it might cause you some nervous system damage, endocrine, liver dysfunction, cancer, enzymes, and you have seen, right, the number of hospitals rise in the areas, and you can see the number of cancer news, which is spreading across. You know about the Punjab train, right? It's also called as a cancer express, so which is happening. 
So how do you ensure that you get a good food uh, going and uh, feeding to your family, right? That's, that's a crucial part of this uh, uh, system, why we are conducting this training and we are bringing in the awareness so that you can feed, feed your family with some good food. Um, if not everything, I, I think, see, there are certain areas wherein you cannot really go ahead and grow a lot of rice, wheat and so stuff. But at least I would say, cut down 60% of the poison from the plate. Even that 60% uh, of a good food can actually cleanse your system or cleanse your body of all the pesticides. It can remove it from your body. Okay, this is just a small uh, uh, presentation what we have told. So I hope uh, going further on uh, telling you like how you can go ahead and grow your vegetables, that will give you a clear pic picture as to how easy in fact it is to cultivate your own food on your terraces. And uh, that, that brings in the new beginning. You will start to enjoy this journey and uh, you will also be successful going ahead. Okay, so this is again. So these are basically some of the uh, pictures which has been shared earlier also in the newspaper. These are some of the endosulfan effects on the kids and people in Kasargod. So I'll move on, not take much of time. I think this was some of them which were recently available in the newspapers also, wherein how they really wash the vegetables and uh, sell it to you. It looks all white and green, but <laughs> this is the background of it. So be careful. Uh, I am not trying to basically say uh, uh, shatter some minds here, but this is uh, the truth what is happening actually. So, and basically, uh, let's talk a few minutes on the brand organic. So what is an organic? So if, you, if there are a lot of outlets which are opening left, right and center, if you happen to go by visitor areas, now there is a boom of uh, saying that uh, there is an organic store which is getting uh, opened up. So what is the genuinity? Nobody knows it, right? Nobody knows whether is it a genuine organic brand. And the certification also there is, uh, you pay the money, you get the certifications. I don't want to go and uh, say this in, public but uh, this is what is happening so when you give it to the uh, test centers you will really come to know the uh, the real value of this uh, so called uh, organic um, produce right so the only way myself or my team here we have experienced because we have been gardening we say organic for those who produce their own food on their terraces or the available spaces what they have got that is organic because you know what is that input which you are going to give it to for growing the vegetables, right? So that is the term organic, not, you cannot ensure that it's all 100% organic out there in the stores. You can never know the input, what they have used. Uh, some people, they also claim uh, as plants do not understand the kind of input what's there or what's available from the, uh, uh, from the land, right? It, but they claim that we have not thrown any pesticides on the plants, so it's organic. They claim that. So there is a lot of uh, ifs and buts can, kind of questions which is happening. But let's not go into the topic. But our own and uh, intention is to grow a clear-cut organic food which is possible only on your terraces or the available land space. Nowadays, there has been a lot of discussions on uh, community garden. So any empty land is there in your area, just make a group of it, speak to your corporators, uh, get going, share the food, share it, whatever you are uh, growing there, share with the company, uh, community, let them also get to know the taste of having the original food. That's what I call it as, that's the original. That means whatever the food which is grown by the nature's uh, view, right? So that, that's what will have a clear taste and you can definitely differentiate between the commercial grown ones and whatever is grown on the land. So let's move to the next topic. So as I told, uh, certified products and uh, so you know the best source is what uh, you grow. 
and i will tell you there is uh, one more thing which is happening so in fact there was a time when i started to look out for land saying that let me go ahead and farm so there are a lot of places which i had visited and uh, this picture shared by the bricks organization right this is exactly what is happening that means most of the villagers are moving out from the agriculture and they are coming into city for their living so uh, like what has happened i will uh, uh, if you go to some areas near and around like uh, kanakpura and certain areas wherein the land is literally depleted literally depleted there is nothing more which can be grown on it so people have just left those and been moving to cities for their living so imagine the population on the other hand is growing and the uh, and the land where you want to grow food is shrinking a lot so what would be the future uh, what would be the future you can just imagine right so it is going to be a crucial situation whether you want to leave uh, you have to go ahead and cultivate with whatever the place you have on the terrace or on the ground so that is going to be the future so just just uh, you if you are a starter today you have just entered a step in the right direction so it's it's not about growing food but it's just about learning and it's also about like uh, uh, knowing about what is going to be the future of the food so once you understand this you will definitely um, i will ensure that you are going to look out for the space or a patch where you want to grow your own food again this is our uh, own <laughs> bengaluru and uh, this is what we see uh, less of trees more of a vehicle and uh, this is what is going to cause the uh, bangalore with a lot of air pollution ground water pollution and uh, yes development at the cost of the nature this is uh, this if i have to put it all across it is going to be the development at the cost of the nature and uh, i think this is all going to be seen in coming years Uh, i would say next 10 years there is going to be a very crucial situation for bangaloreans for even having a proper drinking water and uh, as you have heard in the earlier presentation sewage is again getting the the most next important situation in the bangalore is the sewage treatment so that is again in the alarming uh, situation so let's let's take an oath today saying that we will uh, uh, go ahead build up the nature back we we will uh, recoup to the situation we will bring back the green to the bengaluru and uh, not only bangalore i would say see nature is not just bound to bangalore it's about the world it's about our own country so let's try to contribute whatever is possible and uh, get back the green zone get back, get back some clean air get back some clear water and let's uh, let's see leave something behind for our kids right if we pollute everything and go back then definitely they will curse us so let's let's have a greener planet for them so uh, having said that let's uh, so the motto of uh, even dr vishwanath sir was like grow what you eat eat what you grow that that's that makes a very clear statement and in our uh, we must consider the impact and decisions of our next seven generation this is what our uh, i said about let's uh, leave a greener planet for our kids so this is the karma <laughs> the picture says it's all it's a fantastic uh, uh, picture you you will always get back what you do right so the first question when you want to start uh, the terrace gardening is uh, these are the frequently asked questions uh, what would be the weight on my terrace what about the water leakage uh, what about the soil what happens when it rains uh, too much sunny during summer and uh, whether terrace gardening is profitable so let's keep the profitability uh, at part for some time let's talk about the very first uh, topic of weight on my terrace so if you are a civil engineering uh, if you are a civil engineer by chance you would definitely know that uh, most of this uh, soil or soilless cultivation or the hydroponics or whatever may be the types of uh, or the variety of uh, uh, growth medium we use to produce the food it doesn't matter as of now it what matters is to have a clean and a poison free food and the weight depends so some of them say like i will fill my pot with a 90% red sand and some with uh, soil so let's go ahead and discuss um, as to what would be an ideal potting mix for your situation so that it will not 
create too much of a weight on your terrace but i hope um, see even having like 150 to 200 pots on the terrace so i have roughly around uh, um, around 200 pots if i say now it's not even cross say 1 ton which is easily managed by any kind of interest so don't go by uh, uh, somebody saying that no don't put the pots on the terrace is going to cause weight is going to uh, create water leakage uh, don't don't go by that words terrace can definitely uh, take a, all this uh, weight which people talk about let's discuss about some uh, potting soil also which is going to be an ideal situation of growing any kind of veggies what you want to grow plus it doesn't cause uh, more of a weight onto a terrace so it's going to be a smarter uh, work around so we will discuss in the latest topic as as soon as we start to uh, uh, move on okay now water leakage this is uh, something which is of a challenging subject because uh, we will not be aware of the kind of terrace you are having or when was it built was it waterproof or not so in uh, event of at least two or three rain years right if there was any uh, leakage found then you might need to go back to the plumbing shop to get us uh, a small round of waterproofing done onto your uh, terrace so as to ensure that any kind of an um, water leakage or seepage doesn't happen to your roof and you can get it treated with the waterproof uh, treatment okay so that can be done apart from that normally the latest building say uh, from my experience from 2010 or 2011 onwards whoever are constructed normally most of the roofs are already waterproofed so you don't need to do uh, or don't need to spend much on those but it's up to you if you want to take a precaution of uh, saying that okay let me go ahead and uh, make a waterproof base terrace so that i can step into gardening you can do that so it will be at uh, a few expenses but i am a believer of uh, diy so if you want to enjoy this journey start from ground reality that means if please learn how to maintain this so that is handy tomorrow if you know if you have done the work you always know where to fix it so that that's the whole idea and concept of gardening is you have to start it from the beginning and uh, the soil of course you, you need to build as i told you um, this is also called as the container gardening in other terms as we say container so it's a contained environment so it uh, it's not that we are going to limit ourselves but there are certain restrictions wherein if i want to plant a coconut tree <laughs> that's not possible but uh, apart from that like we have grown even mangoes here so that is possible with uh, uh, so the soil we will going to discuss as soon as we start on to the next slides so what happens when it rains again it all falls back to the same uh, topic of what we have been talk talking if it is all proof then you don't need to worry and uh, too much sunny so this is a very tricky question here so as of no um as of now right i had a shade net in my garden when i started off but i found that bangalore weather is so complimenting then i went ahead and uh, removed all the uh, shade nets for me yes of course people in andhra tamil nadu or into hyderabad where in the heat is on excess you, they might consider of opting for a 30% or a 50% of shade net anyhow uh, as soon as we start to go ahead in this uh, uh, slides right you can see how they have uh, uh, put up the shade nets and you will also get an idea how you can basically design them so whether terrace gardening is profitable i would say profitable on to your health so uh, rather than shelling out money on doctors hospitals i would say uh, shell out or invest money and uh, at the very beginning stage but don't keep on shelling money for this because this is something uh, which i said you have to do it yourself diy right so you come compost you have to generate from your home fertilizers bring uh, do it in your home containers use whatever is available say for example if you have uh, created or say constructed a home with the if there is an excess of materials which are left out like the paint buckets or the baskets use those in the beginning so the cost right or the investment should be very minimal uh, and it should be into the sustenance mode of course if i have to uh, see my uh, system right it's been now 8 years into gardening i if i 
take into the accounts of all the expenses I have done throughout the eight years, it might not even go up to say 20,000 rupees. And uh, so it, it says that for eight years is around uh, 20,000 20, rupees, which I have uh, spent. So I think there are a lot of other ideas. Uh, even you can even spend less than this. So it's all about how you think, what you bring into your terrace, like how do you design and such stuff. So the design aspects of it, we will be covering uh, in this uh, uh, presentation going forward. So seeds and planting material. So this is something which is a topic of discussion and even we can speak about the, the seeds, right? Uh, for the whole day. Uh, it's such an interesting topic and it's also talks about a lot of biodiversity when we uh, come to the seeds normally you know right uh, we talk about the gmos the native seeds and also the hybrids so for the gardening on the terrace or to the available uh, land space which is available to you i would always prefer to go for a native seeds because these are the ones which can always be saved and again reproduced uh, once in a year you can always say the very first veggie which you are getting on your garden, allow it for seeding. That means that would be the first uh, fruit which would have consumed all the nutrition from your container and it would have taken every nutrient value to make it a perfect fruit available. So I would always suggest make the first fruit or the first bare fruit or the vegetable is the best vegetable to keep it for seeding. So normally we call it as a god fruit or the god veggie. So, so that it is saved well and it is uh, distributed for the next season again. You can save it and, and uh, never ever try to search for a GMO. Uh, we are not for it. So that will be a different topic. I don't think we'll be having much time on uh, uh, talking about the GMOs. We will discuss it later or you will get the email ID to uh, see and you can always... Uh, Question back your doubts on that and we'll be able to clarify that. And uh, these are the seeds and the planting material which you require. Normally, this is called as a seedling tray. And uh, seedling tray might not be, say, ideal for everything. There are certain uh, uh, seeds like chilies and uh, say for some more like brinjal and certain stuffs which we'll uh, discuss going ahead. For those, you can use the seedling trays to make certain small saplings out of it. And if you can see the pictorial representation here, uh, in the starting, we just took a small tray. We filled it with the cocoa pit in the second one. And the third one, it has shown the seeds germination and the plant up to say two to three inches, wherein it's ready to go for the mm -hmm. plantation. At this, at this stage, you can go ahead and plant it into the containers. Oh, uh, so if somebody has unmuted their mic, so I'm able to hear uh, several voices, I request them to please mute. And there are different ways. So it's not a must that you have to have a seedling tray. So whatever available from your host, uh, home, right? The whole concept of the terrace gardening is use the best available materials within the home. So don't try to spend uh, too much on this. And uh, so please uh, take the available, uh, like you can see that there are uh, some water cups which you, you would have bought uh, for some functions and the function is over, it was lying somewhere. Make the best use of it. And again, uh, there is a very key topic what we talk about is always recycle. So after there's a plant grown in this cup, do not throw, wash it and again reuse it. Recycling is one more mantra which we talk throughout this uh, 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 training. Okay, please reuse it. Again, and uh, the next important uh, topic for the for gardening is also the kind of tools which we are going to use in the gardening. So this is just a pictorial representation. And uh, you can see that there is a garden fork, water can, hoe, hedge, secature, hand cultivator, shovel, budding knife, pickaxe. See, at the beginning, you might not require everything, okay? Uh, I would recommend, see, the very first thing is the water can here and a hand cultivator and the secature. These three things are the very core and very important. And of course, a trowel. These four items are crucial for gardening. So please, please, please have it handy or just go ahead, order it from wherever it is available. Or if you are going to walk into a marketplace where you see this, just go ahead and again, there is no restriction as to you need to purchase a 
uh, all the same uh, quality. Some might be available for 500, and there are some tools which are available as a bundle for 500 rupees. That's up to you. Choose what you can afford to get in those. And let's come to some gardening containers. Again, as said in the beginning, recycle, reuse. So paint, uh, paint bucket material, which you are uh, seeing here. And uh, some of the oil cans, which you have used, like you would have bought some sunflower oil. After the usage of the oil, wash it. Again, you, you can uh, pot it with the potting medium, start to grow veggies. And uh, there are UV treated bags available. You can use those. And he, you can see even a pickle jar wherein there is a beetle leaf uh, growing in this uh, uh, jar. It's beautiful to see that. So what are the plant material? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, there are certain uh, restrictions available uh, on the type of uh, plastics which you are going to use. So I would always advise to look for a small uh, a mark on the plant. Normally, it's in a triangular shape, and they say uh, to. Uh, I think, anyhow, I will share uh, you the, the best and the safe plastic which can be used onto the gardening. So when I uh, when I uh, when I show you that you can definitely take a snapshot and uh, identify those. Okay, I, I'm going to slide through certain uh, slides wherein it will show you different types of containers used in the terrace gardening. So some of them again the clay pots, which is a traditional one and the fantastic one. Uh, uh, I would say till today it stands the best pots I have ever used because of the aeration in nature. It produces one of the best roots when planted in the clay in clay pots. And of course, these uh, the plastic pots are there. And of course, thermocol also is used because it uh, basically balances the temperature to the soil. It's one of the best containers again to be used. Okay, and you can see some of them are using the gunny bags and uh, some of the fiber pots here, which are of a coir industry. So the, this is a coir byproduct. Wherein, when you uh, when you plant onto this, even the roots can be uh, uh, it, it even roots outside. You can directly plant it without removing the plant. You can directly pot it to the soil uh, with the pot. So it's one of the fantastic uh, methods. And you can see here there is a, a nylon bag or a cement bag which is again filled with uh, uh, with the potting medium, and they are being growing plants or I would say gunny bags or plastic bags. So the Possibility is definitely, uh, I would say, unlimited. You can see almost uh, use everything, whatever you have. Please recycle, reuse. This is what I wanted to say. So here are some of the, you can see uh, a guy filling in with the plastic, plastic bottles, right? Recently, you could have uh, seen, uh, I think, many posts wherein they are growing radishes on the used bisleri bottles, onions, and garlic stuff, and so many possibilities are there. So these are just the pictorial representations of different types of containers. See, again, you can see some uh, bricks being used here. Uh, so these are like uh, people who constructed their home. There were some bricks left out. These are, these are some um, ideas for you. So you can uh, use this, use the potting medium, grow lots of veggies uh, using this. Uh, again, some more with uh, using the baskets. These are basically, if you notice, they are using this uh, cylindrical uh, uh, wheelers which are used to place the LPG cylinders. It's a fantastic idea wherein it's also modularly uh, you, you can basically it's a modular type. You can move it to wherever you want, right? A sunny situation or shady situation. It's very easy. You don't need to lift the weight. And uh, these were the some of the balcony gardens. Uh, uh, this in fact, it was uh, uh, thank you, sir. This was my balcony at the very early stage when I started my uh, garden eight years back and uh, this was ex exactly how it grew um, on the balcony itself and again uh, there are a lot of uh, trellis available you can place a lot of containers which are self-watering based and even small tubs which are used for growing and of course uh, some shared net or the net provided due to the pigeon attack uh, i hope and uh, you can see the growth still right so these are the containers, which are bags, which have been put onto the balconies. Plenty of plenty of options, plenty of options. And you can see the uh, the HDP or the UV treated uh, plastic bags. I'll just move on with the pictures uh, as the uh, there is very limited time. So let's come back to the growing medium for uh, containers. And uh, this this uh, picture representation uh, has the uh, view of our 
Sasyarakshak, which is a fantastic uh, blended organic compost. So if somebody wants this compost, please uh, contact us and we'll be able to help you out with this uh, um, uh, fantastic uh, uh, compost. Okay, what we would always say is a, a good growing medium is almost uh, take three part of uh, compost and one soil. Uh, for any, we also suggest take say one is to one is to one ratio. We also suggest say uh, one part of sand, one part of soil, one part of compost, and one part say I would say a mix of all uh, neem, honge, and uh, is basically uh, uh, the cakes, uh, which is a byproduct after the oil extract. So there are two types of uh, cakes available. Basically. Um, uh, neem and uh, honge and uh, also the castor, which are a non-edible oil cakes. So there is a byproduct uh, of uh, those cakes available, which is in a powder form. Also, you can uh, take the um, groundnut uh, cake also, but be ensure that uh, do not add the groundnut cake directly until unless it's composted or you add it to the soil. Ensure that uh, most of the uh, liquid is extracted. Otherwise, it will attract a lot of ants. So this is the simplest and the best um, growing medium which is available. So somebody wants to take a snapshot of this for your reference, you can always do this. So a lot of uh, uh, options are available. So apart from this, I would urge people to go in for composting at the home. So I will be discussing very briefly about the types of composting which you can uh, achieve at your home. But I would say, See, uh, composting is the basic step and a very necessary step if you have to start gardening. Why? Because if you all depend on too much of a fertilizers, right, you might need to again be uh, shelling out a lot of money. S these are all the stuffs for the beginning. So we will be able to help you out with the good kind of the compost and um, uh, stuff available for you. You can take up, fill your containers and start gardening. But over the time, you have to start composting. The uh, the main um, agenda of the terrace gardening is to ensure that there is a zero wet waste going out of your home. Zero means it should be zero. Otherwise, doing anything is definitely uh, a waste of time. But I would urge everybody to please ensure that no one throws out any kind of uh, garbage is, I would not call it a garbage. It's a, it's definitely a fantastic nutrient. If composted in a proper way, it can feed your plant. And again, you can take a fantastic output out of the plants. So I, I hope most of them would have uh, taken this snapshot. This would uh, help you. And uh, yes, this is the one which I was telling about the plastics. When you start to use the reused, uh, plastics like a bislary bottles or the paint buckets or the drums which are available a lot of uh, uh, options are there <coughs> excuse me so you can take a snapshot of this so what is the kind of material and the, this basically gives you an idea of uh, the recycle usage how many times you can do or how long you can uh, use this so this is going to be the uh, recycling uh, information so having this Definitely, you can um, uh, decide about what is the kind of uh, the, uh, the gardening container which you want to do. This information is available so as to ensure that there is nothing leaching out from the plastic to the soil. Uh, otherwise, there is no point in, uh, again, uh, doing the gardening, right? So, you, so as to ensure that you are growing a safe food. So this is uh, key to it. Please ensure that uh, certain plastics are disposed, disposed in a proper way and um, uh, uh, use, reused. Again, uh, there are some more uh, garden uh, idea wherein a lot of different types of uh, trellises are available, garden designs and garden basics. So I'll scroll through the pictures so that it gives you an idea as to what all can be done. Uh, again, DIY is the first option. If you are still uh, having no time and uh, you want to buy some of those, then these are all available. You can have a look at uh, the structures of and the designs. This will give you a um, different idea. So these are the garden stands which are available and the shared nets and the different types of uh, designs. Pet bottles again used as uh, the growing medium for the small herbs and uh, again uh, for the flowering stuff. <coughs> Okay, 
So it's all about the logic, applying the logic, having a proper soil about the well-drained soil. We will talk about the, what about the well-drained soil and other stuff, we will talk about it also. So I'm just sharing about the ideas. So, so this, if you see on the left-hand side, this is all used by the cocoa pit or the coir industry. These pots are made from the coir, so it can uh, be even grown in such containers. And you can see the polybags here, wherein this is made of that of uh, HDPE material, and uh, this come these these things last for almost five to six years. You can use it safely without any issues. <clears throat> Bush vegetables are one of the best and the preferred method to be grown on the terraces. So here is some of the examples which I am showing of how the growth is and uh, how good it has grown in the grow bags using the uh, the container or the potting mix which I had shared. You can see all the patta gobi and uh, uh, lots of uh, veggies grown here. You can see the bottle gourd, bitter gourd. So possibility is unlimited. So you can almost grow anything apart from the coconut, as I said in the beginning. So it's like it's just about like the kind of uh, size of containers what you have and the type of uh, vegetables you plant. And of course, the season definitely matters. And normally uh, choose the native variety, which will definitely help you be more successful ra rather than choosing the uh, the uh, hybrid varieties. Okay, these are uh, some of the samples which you can see. I think this these pictures definitely will inspire you all um, for going and starting ahead uh, with the terrace garden. So wine vegetables, you can see a lot of uh, pumpkins and uh, even the watermelon, which is grown so well. These are the pumpkin wine vegetables. And these are like, and uh, as uh, said earlier, right, it is a very good time to get in your kid to get a touch of the soil. Um, I would say every kid should play in our soil. If you remember the dose, uh, uh, the days when we played, right, our hands are so clean even today. So we play on a uh, daily basis on the soil. So please ensure that they all play in the soil. Even the beneficial bacteria in the soil also helps you keep a lot of and uh, gain a lot of immunity. So don't uh, don't uh, shy them away saying that uh, there was an animal uh, manure mixed in it. Of course, there are a lot of uh, hygiene factors, but ensure that they are close to nature. They can come close to the nature only if they are playing in the soil. This is uh, this is a topic which I cover in almost every training I go in, and uh, please ensure that uh, they do this. Leafy vegetables grown, uh, which is showing shown here. This again grow bags. So I'll scroll through the pictures very fast because uh, the, the time is really unlimited. You can see even the banana plantation, which is which can be grown on the terraces. This isn't it amazing, right? See this, fantastic. Papaya and sapota, pomegranates and uh, types of containers. So this shows you basically a different type of containers which you can use to grow different. So for example, if I'm trying to grow some uh, different trees, then there might be a different sized containers which are required. And according to those needs, you can go ahead and uh, get in your containers uh, opted for. Here is the best part is a jackfruit which is growing in, in a container. This is amazing. And of course, the medicinal plants, of course, you can have a small medicinal branch on your garden itself, which will have lots of uses. And in these days of the pandemic, most of these herbs are used as one of the immunity boosters. Isn't it so wonderful that we are all having since so many years and this was always available as an option, but we never knew how to do. And I think this session will ensure that uh, you can go ahead and uh, now start to uh, uh, cultivate those amazing and uh, see this the amount of vegetables produced you can see your family enjoying with the produce this definitely brings you lots of uh, happiness and joy when you see these vegetables uh, coming and it's it's not only is that we have grown the vegetable it's also about the sustenance when you see these dates say may june and all the stuff right you can see the kind of sustenance which you are uh, able to see. Normally, they are saying um, even weekly two meals of uh, good organic meals can definitely flush out 100% toxins in which is produced in the body. There is a study which has been done in the London as of now. Two good meals, which are organic meals, 
with no pesticides can flush the 100% toxins in your body now this would definitely give you good reason as to why you should start a terrace gardening even say you get this produces of uh, two times or three times in a week it is definitely a very valued produce right you can see there is a fantastic question called as is it sufficient now you know the answers right i would not uh, say no to this definitely this is so much of a produce i would call it as a self sufficiency this these are uh, these are all the produce from one of our uh, members pratima adiga and uh, uh, there are a lot of members who have uh, shared their uh, posts and i thank all of them for uh, sharing these pictures this gives lot of inspirations to others who are uh, uh, coming and uh, going to start so what is that you need to consider uh, before starting of a terrace garden space and family members topography light availability of uh, certain vegetables staggered sowing of vegetables intercropping uh, maintaining compost vermi compost there are so much of uh, discussions which can be done but uh, space definitely it is uh, the most important and i would say topo topography and light these are the two key important uh, ingredients for gardening so if you have a space say some of them say i have just a balcony of say 4 by 4 or say 10 by 10 can i grow something so the next question i ask them is like what is the kind of light you get in if you are getting at least say 4 hours of uh, light definitely you can grow plenty of leafy vegetables and if it is like a kind of an indirect light situation wherein uh, your wall is reflecting there are even certain vegetables which can be grown even in the indirect light of course uh, the probably this uh, the the growth rate might differ due to the availability of light but there is no way that i can say that no boss you can't do there is definitely there is lot of uh, available options so people who have limited uh, say light say they say i just get one hour of this uh, sunlight so what can i grow which is going to help me so you can plant lot of oxygen based plants like aloe vera and uh, mother in law's tongue and such stuff at least go ahead and do such plantations which will provide you with a 24 bar 7 oxygen so it's good to grow those plants sit there and meditate or yoga you can get a fresh air or fresh oxygen even you the possibilities are unlimited so the, like um there are available options the for the plants which can be just grown with uh, one hour of uh, light and four hours of light and definitely if you are getting more than uh, four hours and you have ample space there is lot many possibilities of growing like creepers and you can grow fruit trees you can grow lots and lots of vegetables even say for example the dumpster tree and uh, mango trees you can grow and the possibilities are unlimited okay you can see just a aerial view of certain pictures of the gardens here in the last i'll be sharing a produce of uh, my uh, my terrace even though in the interest of the time i so that uh, i made a video is just takes around 3 minutes i'll show you in the end so that should help you at least to get an idea like kind of produce and uh, top 10 reasons as to why you need to garden isn't it beautiful okay and see it's also about the beautifying aspect so many people would be looking for having say a beautiful garden so it depends on what you want to have there are options are available you can go for a pre designed stands or some people who are interested in getting this in a diy mode they can do that themselves so these are all the pictures of like uh, the leafy greens grown beans grown so if you grow a fruit or a root you will definitely need a full sun so the message itself says it all sprouts partial shade is all you need so nowadays there is a big boom on uh, the sprouts which have been sold in the market uh, which are high valued these are pretty easy to grow and there are a lot of uh, videos which have been uh, shared on how to grow the sprouts as they carry a lot of uh, proteins and such uh, so you can you can okay. definitely opt to grow for even the sprouts so the possibilities are good you can try out and uh, have uh, share the success ratio with us and these are some of the examples for the shade net 
of course you can try uh, if you feel that your area is too hot and you can uh, the plants are withering wilting and such stuff you can always choose that as a later option but when you start a garden start off with the bare minimum uh, needs whatever you have the bare minimum containers what you have don't go and invest very hugely onto everything as as the, as the as it uh, passes by as the years goes on start to expand it slowly according to your needs so by the time you also learn the curve of the gardening so that that's very important uh, rather than investing say i would go ahead and i have money i invest like 1 lakh rupees and nothing comes up so that will be a very hard learning so i would suggest what start with what you have go step by step and uh, nurture your garden okay and also try to learn from it if there are any failures as i say normally when when i started the tomato plant which i grew for two months gave me two tomatoes <laughs> so it was it was uh, it, it was definitely a learning curve so i started to do research as to why only two tomatoes when, uh, when the tomatoes in the field can uh, create cages of uh, those so this is how we have learned in the stages of course um, uh, in one hour normally we can't discuss about those stuff but i would always urge make a note of how you grow and what you grow what was the kind of produce and uh, did the plant wilt it's a learning curve so note everything uh, until the very first uh, stage of your learning until unless you really know like how the plant behaved on your terrace and uh, what is the kind of inputs you gave so this would uh, give you the um, uh, benefit of doing your best in the next level so this is this is uh, what i want to say sanju sölpa speed up maadi ha ah. so these are uh, some of the samples and uh, let me uh, go back so these are some of the uh, diy for the drip irrigation as you know that there is a water scarcity right you can always start to use this uh, drip irrigation system wherein they have used the small uh, pet bottle to water the plants this is a very intelligent approach uh, some of this diy methods are available on the videos if you look for you can go and uh, see that and uh, start to do this and uh, water well i would say don't go for a dripper or a automatic irrigation at the very first beginning of your gardening is always advised to have a bucket of water and also mug to start the watering so that you exactly know how the how to water and ensure your uh, uh, the proper soil mix will all, always ensure that there is a proper drainage so uh once the uh, see the soil requires moisture not the water entirely okay once the soil is moist the plant responds very well rather than too much of a water in the soil the plant doesn't show the good sign okay so always ensure that your pots are well drained as soon as you water the moisture should retain and the excess water should always flow out that doesn't mean you have to over water so please keep in mind so you have to water accordingly a very limited amount to the water what which where it can hold so this is an uh, sample of overwatering or the soil structure wherein it's fully compacted and uh, uh, sir can uh, some of you mute <laughs> anyway so some of uh, some of the pots which, which you can see as the uh, the water is stagnated here okay don't do this this is a, not the and uh, might be there are not of uh, drain holes which are blocked and uh, this will co cause the plant root to rot and it will not grow well so ensure that the drainage is best and these are some of the products which as we uh, we spoke about the used water right when we uh, say lot of uh, the water or the re reuse recycle these are some of the products from bricks uh, if you are using a dish water or the toilet bathroom cleaner these are the natural ingredients wherein such waters can be reused in the garden so i would uh, encourage everyone to go ahead uh, take a look of this product start to use bring down some pollution which we are doing currently so please uh, try to use this products and i will be talking only just a few, uh, few of uh, the macronutrients which are uh, core the nitrogen potassium and the phosphorus and uh, some of the macronutrients like calcium magnesium and uh, sulfur and of course there are trace elements which is uh, very important for boron copper iron and uh, chlorine uh, manage uh, molybdenum and uh, manganese zinc selenium so all these are very essential so if you are into the composting then most of these are uh, available in the compost the say i would say the macronutrients and uh, some of them are available from the soil 
So uh, please ensure the proper potting mix will give you a balanced nutrition to the plant. And uh, of course, if you want to please take this snapshot because this will help you in the gardening journey. This also shows the deficiency of the plants, if at all, if it occurs right in the rainy season or some other season wherein the nutrients are lost from the soil, then plants shows to uh, say that uh, this I am deficient by this kind of a, a mineral or by a, a micro or a macronutrient. This is a deficiency chart which we can show that and amend with some compost or the different available methods of uh, healing this uh, nutrients. And again, uh, when I, I had spoken about uh, the composting, so there are basically two types of composting uh, available. One is uh, aerobic composting and uh, anaerobic uh, composting. Aerobic composting is something wherein, uh, wherein it, the composting is done using the airs, wherein you mix a lot of browns, you mix a lot of greens. So it's the carbon to nitrogen ratio, which it starts to de uh, degrade or decompose and produce a fantastic compost. And this needs to be tilled, say, in uh, say every two to three days once so that uh, there is a lot of air introduced for it to grow the microbes inside and the microbes uh, normally break down the compost and it provides you with fantastic fertilizer for your plants. Uh, this is normally suitable for the people who basically are vegetarians and they have a lot of space uh, for, uh, for uh, aerobic composting. And let me go back to vermicomposting. Is to, if you can search for this topic, you can find. It is basically a composting with the help of worms. And of course, there are certain restrictions of not adding onion peels, garlics, and citrus into this and introduce the worms. And they also help with the conjunction of uh, microbes. They do help break down the mat um, uh, organic matter much faster. These are the different anaerobic composting. Uh, anaerobic composting is something uh, wherein uh, you use the materials and there is a Bokashi medium. Uh, so you can uh, read about the Bokashi composting on the internet, which will which can give you uh, more information. And this is meant for basically the apartments wherein the limited space is available, where they have to try to compost and they can keep this container internally. And this will not uh, give you any kind of a smell. Also weekly ones, there will be a liquid which will be generated in the aerobic uh, anaerobic composting. You can use and dilute it to one is to 40 times and water your plant. That will be a fantastic fertilizer. And this kind of uh, composting can also intake all the kind of non witch based materials also. And this needs to be done in an anaerobic condition. That means there is no air introduced. Every time you put in the organic matter or the, the non veg uh, matters, right? You can just need to do is uh, have a handful of the Bokashi powder onto it, tap it so that there is no air holes left and uh, you can go on, uh, close the lid and keep it. And after there is a pickling is set, you can again start the same aerobic composting and generate a compost out of it. Okay, that's much about uh, the composting fact. And I hope this session was fast, but uh, it was informative. Uh, so this will help you start off with the basics uh, of the gardening. Uh, let me share a, a small uh, topic and on uh, why you need to garden. Let me. <clears throat> Is the video visible? Something started. You play it. Okay, sir. As quickly as possible, Sanjeev. Done. Only three minutes. That's it. I don't think I am seeing anything. Sir, can I tell you? No. Okay. Um, okay, it's okay. Like I can go ahead and share the YouTube link later uh, so mm -hmm. that they can uh, have a look at it. Uh, I hope most of would have been uh, benefited by this uh, uh, small talk and I would say uh, thank you for providing the opportunity for uh, going and uh, uh, sharing this uh, uh, journey of uh, so-called gardening and I thank you all of them for uh, patiently listening to me for uh, last 45 minutes. I hope you are successful and uh, one thing which I want to promise uh, for all of you, um, myself or Bricks is always available for you to ensure your journey of garden is successful. Uh, I hope uh, there will be a, a, a link shared 
uh, or you can write back to uh, bricks for any further queries we'll ensure that so here is the link uh, people can just take a snapshot of this and uh, they can get back to us for any uh, uh, future queries okay and if if somebody wants to take down my number say it's 9901971560 Nine nine zero one nine seven one five six zero. So you can touch back. Uh, uh, get me. Uh, sorry, get back to me, and we will answer all your queries related to the gardening. And uh, we, as an organization, will help you be successful. So I will uh, go, go ahead and end this session by saying, all the best. Be Thank successful. you, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, the only expectation is that we wanted to tour your garden. Virtual. Yes, <laughs> uh, so so uh, not the uh, workshop anyway. So we will come back to you. We will do it again. We will have time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was the expectation. Now we will uh, move to the next uh, session. Thank you, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, Thank you, those sir. Those who are uh, uh, having, we are close.